on a recent video uh, I was walking around Daventry and one of the comments I received uh, was from a lady telling me off because I wasn't wearing a mask um, so I've got one on on my walk today just to prove that I do but there's nobody actually anywhere near me so I'll take it off so I was wondering what I was going to talk to you all about and uh, friend of the family, Suzanne. Uh, she said she'd like to hear more about my time in the fire service. So I thought, yeah, why not? And uh, it's a glorious day today, have some mild, really quite warm. And uh, let's hope that it uh, stays like that for a, <laughs> I'll tell you what, stays like that until June suit me. It's lovely, it's a really nice day, especially after all the cold. And that was something else that got me thinking because there's only so much I can tell you about being in lockdown on the canal. Boat can't really go anywhere except for something essential. And uh, I can go for walks, but I'm limited because I mean, even in the towns, there isn't very much open. I'd like to go to rugby because there's such a lot of history there to to explore, but really meant to, so I'm a bit stuck. Oh, I'll tell you what. This kissing gate here. Uh, the other day, there was a older couple, about my age, I suppose, came through. And halfway through, the bloke stopped. His wife, presumably wife, came up the other side and they kissed over the top of it. Oh, it was really sweet. <laughs> There's still romance. So the year was 1977. I'd uh, just come out of the Navy. Um, I'd for love I didn't want to it was something I'd always wanted to do right from my whenever I could remember uh, to travel the world and then I met Dana and traveling the world was the last thing on my mind I wanted to come back home again all the time anyway I left the Navy and I thought it would be quite straightforward go straight into the fire brigade so I applied at uh, the nearest fire station in Devon um, and I took the tests I um, did okay with the physical test, uh, that was no problem, I was quite young and fit and healthy, uh, carrying a man, what was it, 100 yards on your back uh, in a fireman's carry, running up and down a ladder, oh I don't know, all sorts of things, but uh, past that no problem. Uh, then there was an educational test, maths and English mostly I think, and general knowledge. And um, there was... Uh, an interview after that so uh, I got to interview stage chuffed a bit so I thought this is easy I do remember in the written test that there was a question who wrote Scheherazade Scheherazade a couple of days ago this was all frozen over it was starting to snow it was freezing cold now look at it the downside of course is that this was all frozen and you could walk on it. It's looking a bit sludgy now. Still, that's the way I gotta go. When I left the Navy, I obviously had to move out of the married quarters that we were living in, in uh, Plymouth, in Devon. So, Donna, me and our little boy, Nathan, moved to live with Donna's mum and dad in Weymouth. And uh, having already taken and passed the, uh, the tests, like the, the written tests and the, uh, the physical test for Devon Fire Brigade, I got recalled for an interview. I had to go back to Plymouth uh, to sit an interview. So my father-in-law. Uh, took me in the car and uh, I arrived for my interview. Now, have you ever had one of those interviews when things just don't go your way? 
I mean, I, f I felt right from the beginning that uh, one of the officers that were was on the panel was like somewhat hostile, <laughs> um, and uh, I just began to feel a little bit more uncomfortable. Now, I mentioned about Shahara's aid. <laughs> I always thought that was a funny question, but I was 21, you know, just 21 years old, not very old, and uh, I, I thought, I asked my mother-in-law what Shahara's aid was all about, and uh, she said, oh, it was uh, written by Rimsky Korsakov. So uh, I don't know. I thought maybe Devon Fire Brigade had a thing about classical music, you know. So I started listening to. I mean, I listened to Scheherazade, and uh, then I started to listen to Bach and Mozart and and stuff. Tchaikovsky, some of which I enjoy to this day. You know, it kind of opened up a new musical field to me. But I stopped listening to Tamla Motown and. Uh, the progressive rock stuff that I'd been into before I joined the Navy and uh, I started listening to classical music quite like some of it I mean couldn't tell who most of it was by but my mother-in-law had a collection of um, records that I could listen to and I, I kind of really got into it so one of the questions at interview was what sort of music do you like well <laughs> I said well classical and instantly instantly this officer, this this hostile officer, leapt upon that and he said, "Oh, really? What's your uh, favourite bit of music?" <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sherazade. So um, there was a, a awkward silence, and I said, "Well, I, I don't really know." And he said, "Well, why did you say that that was your favourite sort of music?" And I said, "Well, it's just you know what I'm listening to now." And uh, I mean, this remember this is an interview for. The fire brigade. I mean, it just started getting completely overwhelmed with classical music for some reason. I mean, it was unfamiliar territory. I didn't want to go there. So he said, uh, you know, maybe the Beatles or Ella Fitzgerald. I mean, I'd heard of the Beatles. <laughs> so anyway, I, I just sort of stumbled to a bit of a halt, a natural break. And I could tell one of the other officers on the panel was a little bit uncomfortable about this and you know clearly he he tried to steer the interview in a different direction and things started to pick up and they were going better and then towards the end this original of officer that I've, I've always felt was a bit hostile uh, he said to me uh, I, I see you're living in Dorset and I said uh, yes sir I, I had to move from my married quarter uh, and I've moved in with my mother and father-in-law. And he said, well, do you intend to move back to Dorset when uh, you you get into our fire brigade? Well, I mean, I, I didn't know the answer to that. I thought it was the same as the Navy. You know, you can put in a request to, to go to a different place. I don't know, Plymouth to um, Portsmouth or Portsmouth to Chatham or whatever it might be. And, you know, if there was a, an opportunity there, then fine, they, they would accommodate accommodate you. So I said, well, yeah. I mean, I was on the list for uh, council housing in uh, in Dorset. So, you know, we were rather hoping that we'd, we'd settle down there. And he said, well, in that case, best you join Dorset Fire Brigade then. End of interview, didn't get in. <laughs> By the way, rum and coke. Cheers, everybody. So that was 1977, or towards the end of 1977. 1978, I applied to join Dorset Fire Brigade. Uh, and I did the physical examination, you know, the, uh, the same run of tests, carrying people 100 yards on your back, running up and down ladders, running out hose along the ground, rolling it back up again. No problems whatsoever. Took the educational test failed the maths failed the maths I I was devastated I mean it occurred to me that I hadn't taken any kind of test in mathematics since I was 15 years old which you know didn't seem like very long when you're 21 but uh, it it was long enough I mean I 
no real sort of need for mathematics and I, I failed so I was I was devastated um, my ambitions thwarted again uh, I decided to go down to the local library and I got out uh, some books on O-level mathematics and uh, started reteaching myself um, the basic mathematics that I needed to get into the fire service towards the end of 1978 where are we yeah 1978 um, got the opportunity to apply again so I did and this time I passed uh, and I passed the maths without any problem and it came to interview and I passed the interview brilliant all I needed to do now excuse me run my coat all I needed to do now was to wait uh, until a, I was allocated a, an entry date and I was fine. I was expecting the letter uh, early in 79 and I did in fact get a letter from Dorset Fire Brigade which said we regret to inform you that due to local authority spending cuts there will be no or all recruitment has been suspended um, for at least two years. Terrific very early in uh, 1981 I got another letter from the fire service that said if I'm still interested in joining would I uh, please let them know and make myself available for a for interview so uh, that took place in let me see that would have been February 1981 and uh, I went along and uh, at the interview the uh, presiding officer on the panel said to me you know I see you've tried several times before what will you do if you get turned down this time and I said uh, I'd, I'd really like to join and I will continue trying until such times as you tell me that I can't apply anymore simple as that really so the next letter I got was telling me that I passed and I joined the fire service uh, let me see that would be June uh, yeah June 1981 so I was in uh, I knew that was wrong as soon as I said it April 1981 was when I joined the fire service April so yeah in April I went along to Weymouth Fire Station on the allotted day um, and we were taken by minibus to Bournemouth Fire Station where we were kitted out and from Bournemouth Fire Station um, we were taken to uh, the training centre at Southampton um, in those days uh, Dorset didn't have the facilities to train their own uh, recruits which was pretty standard and common um, on my recruits course we were joined by uh, obviously people from Hampshire being in Southampton so there were the recruits from Hampshire there were some guys from Wiltshire that had sent their guys to be trained and uh, three of us from Dorset and uh, we were taken to Redbridge Hill Fire Station uh, in Southampton itself where we uh, were to live for the duration because they were building a, a purpose-built training centre but it hadn't been completed so we ended up living on a fire station in the middle of Southampton it was great I tell you it was really brilliant um, there were no restrictions like there were later on with um, you know when you were a new recruit you weren't allowed to go out for the first six weeks or something and then uh, you were allowed a certain amount of leave um, at Redbridge when we got back from the training uh, complex which was at Eastley fire station so we would do our training during the day at Eastley uh, and then we would be minibused back to uh, Redbridge Hill fire station where we uh, were just left to our own devices I mean you know we we went back did a bit of study 
and then it was out on the town in Southampton virtually every night. Nobody worried about it. Nobody uh, gave us any restrictions. We could come and go as we were pleased. I tell you, it was a kind of paradise. It was brilliant. And then we got to go home every weekend. Um, <clears throat> I think by the time I finished my training, I, I was a, as fit as I think I'd ever been. Um, it, it was terrific. I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And having been through HMS Ganges as a 15-year-old, and I, I remember, you know, that was nearly a year of basic training to join the Navy. Um, there was nothing they could throw at me that was going to phase me. One way or another, by hook or by crook, I was going to pass that training course. Uh, and, of course... I did. Um, I think <laughs> I think I'll leave my career in the fire service uh, and possibly a, a bit of history as to how the fire service came about to my next couple of videos. I mean, give me something to talk about later on, won't it? But uh, anyway, that's that's how come I finally managed after four years uh, to go from. Uh, the Royal Navy to the fire service with um, some jobs in engineering factories in between. I mean, uh, one of them uh, was because I had to find something pretty quick because I didn't get into Devon Fire Brigade. So uh, I applied for a job at um, Wellworthy's, which was a factory uh, on the outskirts of Weymouth that manufactured... Uh, cylinder liners and gudgeon, gudgeon pins for tractors. It used to be Whitehead Torpedo Works and back in the First World War, I think it was, uh, it was where they tested and built torpedoes um, and uh, it eventually... Oh, Swan's taken off. don't know if you heard that. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're... we're Whitworth Torpedo Factory became Wellworthy's and they made, uh, you know, like I say, gudgeon pins and cylinder liners for tractors. Um, gudgeon pins. If you don't know what a gudgeon pin is, the gudgeon pin goes from the fluctuating flick-flack valve to the auxiliary hydraulic transfer unit. If you believe that, believe anything. Anyway, look, uh, lovely talking to you. Um, I'll do another video uh, that, that goes into what I did in the fire service. In the meantime, it's been nice sitting here by my little stove, having a chat about what came before. <laughs> if you liked it, then great. And if you didn't, I'm really sorry. Uh, I do feel I've got, I've got to talk about something. But um, look, as always, look after yourselves, um, stay safe, and I love you all. And uh, thanks ever so much for for taking the time to watch this drivel. <laughs> uh, well, it's fun for me anyway. Take care, everybody. Love you. Bye.